Hello my dears, my name is Mina, welcome to my channel Mina Reads, and today we are going to be talking about all of the books that I read in June of 2022. Okay y'all, so this is like my physical stack and then I did read, I want to say about 14 books this month. So first up we have Black Girl Call Home. This is a poetry collection by Jasmine Mans, and this has come really highly recommended and I've seen it talked about quite a bit on Bookstagram um, maybe a few years ago when it first came out and I think that it was really good. I have lots of little highlighted and annotated portions in here because I think that there were a lot of really really great poems in here and it has made me more interested in poetry so if you have any poetry collection recommendations for me I would love to hear them in the comments below. Um, but this poetry collection it covers a really wide array of topics um you know it talks about black girlhood being a black woman the the dangers of being a black woman the joys of being a black woman black motherhood it talks a lot about black culture so many different things it tackles so many different topics it also there are a lot of like poems in here about queer love about first love about pain and heartbreak and it just covers a really wide array of themes and topics and I think it was really really interesting. I also think it made for a kind of eclectic mix of poems so there were definitely some hits and definitely some misses for me but I think that overall it was like a very good reading experience and so I gave it four stars. I'm not too familiar with poetry if I'm honest so like I can't I can't say that I'm coming from like a super objective like nitpicky kind of standpoint because I don't I don't know too much about poetry but I enjoyed a good deal of these and some of them I didn't like but most of them were really cool. Um, then we have Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson and this is about two black British students and basically they fall in love at a party. Uh, it's kind of love at first sight and this is a story about them falling in love, being in love but it's mostly about this like unnamed male protagonist and his experiences as a young black man in love in Britain in school. Uh, he's dealing with depression, he's dealing with violence in his community, he's uh, really grappling with the death of a really close friend of his um, and it's really about I think about you know black masculinity, black pain, um, but also black love and how difficult it can be to love when you are someone who is such a heavily politicized and policed body um, and it's really heavily about that I would say. I know that a lot of people talk about this and they talk about how it's a love story and it's you know so beautiful and lyrical and it is that. I think that there's so many amazing quotes in here and I definitely highlighted a bunch of stuff in here like it's really awesome. Um, but I think that for me what stands out much more than the love story because I feel like the love story is just a mechanism for the other themes. Um, I think that it is really an exploration of black masculinity and how hard it is for black men to show and express themselves and be vulnerable and show up in romantic relationships because of some of the hardships that they experience um you know just in the world etc so i think that it was really interesting and i definitely appreciated the reading experience quite a bit and i gave this one four stars so then we're getting a little bit into my manga era so i have been reading lots of manga and comics recently and so i read wota koi love is hard for an otaku volume one and i have already watched the anime for this and i love the anime um i have to say i loved this a bit less than I love the anime. Um, so to quickly summarize it, this is about these two characters, Hirotaka and Narumi, and they are childhood best friends and they are both otakus, which basically means that they're both like nerds and they have different like passions, but also similar passions. They're really into video games and stuff like that. But the girl, she's also an otaku for like BL manga, and so she's like a Fujoshi. And I feel like in this in the manga, her whole Fujoshi thing was like 110% more uncomfortable than it felt in the show. Maybe I just am forgetting some of the stuff that happens in the show but I feel like her fetishization of gay men was so odd and uncomfortable to read about in this. Um, but I think that beyond that like her and Hirotaka have a really really beautiful relationship and you know they have this whole friends to lovers vibe going on and I think that it's just a really really sweet story about two people sharing and indulging in each other's passions um, and how important that is in like a loving and committed relationship even if you guys don't have everything in common because like Hirotaka he literally couldn't give less of a fuck about BL manga but he you know indulges her in her passion for it which I think is cute to an extent. I also still do think that the fetishization is weird but you, you get what I'm saying like the fact that he really validates her hobby and he 
values it because it is important to her and he supports her in her hobby and her passions is really really sweet so i like that and i think i enjoyed the vibe of the anime a little bit more because i don't know i think the humor and things like that landed a bit better in the show than it did in the manga but still they're a really great couple i totally wish she wasn't a fujoshi because it is very annoying but other than that it's really cute to an extent i did enjoy it a bit next manga i have is love of kill by Faye, and this is a assassin love story so it's about this assassin his name is ryongha and he meets this female assassin named chateau and he is immediately in love with her kind of because he doesn't meet very many women in his line of work that's like exactly what he says on the first page or so and he's like oh i don't really meet that many women in my line of work so like you want to go to dinner and she's very much not interested in him whatsoever she just wants to do her job but he is interested in courting her and so to court her he basically like kills her targets and brings them to her wrapped in a bow uh in an attempt to get her attention and her affection um how well is he succeeding at this not not much she's really not that into him but um yeah i think that this is an interesting start to a story um i'm not really sure where it's going and i'm not sure how invested i am in the rest of the story because of the fact that the girl is so disinterested in him and it's not only just like oh she's not interested or it's like oh will they won't they like there is no chemistry between them there is no banter like there's nothing it's like him interacting with a brick wall i have no i have no investment in their relationship uh which is disappointing because i think the concept of this manga is really really interesting so i might read a, another volume i do think it also has an anime so maybe i'll read another volume maybe i'll watch the anime see how i feel but i just definitely have to say that it didn't do a good job in this first volume of investing me in this main dynamic between chateau and ryungha but it is a really interesting concept and i do like it to an extent because the plot is pretty cool um i don't want to like spoil things about the plot but the plot is pretty cool outside of their relationship stuff so maybe i will continue maybe i won't i don't know i haven't decided yet then we have fangs volume one this was absolutely incredible five stars roses roses i'm throwing roses tens 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 across the board it just was absolutely incredible so fangs is about this character named n and n basically is involved in this vampire attack at a nightclub and the vampire comes through and basically slaughters everyone and he happens to be, be he happens to be the one lucky or maybe unlucky person who ends up surviving but he is bitten so he does turn into a vampire and so he has to be taken under the wing of this older mentor type vampire named ichi and ichi works for an organization called fangs and so fangs they basically oversee vampire society essentially because they want vampires to be able to easily integrate into human society and they don't want there to be a bunch of vampire attacks and stuff like the ones that n was involved in so they try to keep a close eye on all of the vampires in their sphere um, and make sure they're fed and everything like that and one such way that they do that is they have this pairing system where every vampire goes to kind of like these mixers so they can meet a partner and this partner is like a romantic and a sexual partner but also a feeding partner they feed on each other and then they don't need human blood um and so basically this is kind of that kind of story where n has to find a partner and that partner is ichi and uh it's about n like integrating himself into this vampire society and all of the different vampires that he meets and all the different pairs that he engages with but i absolutely love this first of all i think the world building is really cool in it the art style is absolutely gorgeous and and ichi i love their dynamic together they're so fun n's character i really really like him a lot like he's very cool he's very cute um he's like a skater boy adorable um and i also really love the way that it talks about immortality and the importance of companionship in life and like how companionship whether you know friendship and platonic or romantic or sexual and how like important that can be um and how difficult it can be as a immortal person to not have someone to like go through life with and it's just so interesting and i love it so much and i cannot wait for the next volume because it's incredible so yeah I would highly highly recommend this also very much for adults because it is incredibly explicit imagery in here so read this if you're an adult person um and if you're not an adult don't read it or at least I can feel better about myself because I told you not to read it 
And then I also read Spy Family Volume 4. I don't have the physical, um, but I read Spy Family Volume 4 and oh my god, so good. So Spy Family, if you don't know, is this series where it is about this character named Lloyd Forger. He is a master spy and for one of his latest missions, he needs to pretend to be a family man so he can get close to this guy basically and so he adopts a daughter named Anya and he gets himself a fake wife named Yor and they all move in they all have this like they're building this family dynamic together so that Lloyd can complete his mission and they don't know that Lloyd is a spy but Lloyd is doing all of this so that he can complete his mission and get close to this man whose son attends this academy that he enrolls his daughter Anya in. And so this is like a found family story, but it's also a spy story. It's really fun. There's lots of hijinks, but there's also lots of fun like family building stuff going on. And it's just so, so sweet, but also really fun and like action packed in this particular volume has a lot of the political intrigue. And we get to see more of the kind of stuff that Lloyd is doing on the side and the kind of cases that he has to handle while also being like a father and a husband and trying to balance these two aspects of his life um but the cool twist is that his fake wife your she is actually an assassin which she is keeping from Lloyd and their daughter Anya is a telepath and she is also keeping this from her new parents and so it's just really fun there's lots of hijinks it's very sweet I enjoyed it so much and this volume in particular I think was my favorite so far um, and I definitely can't wait to read more. I have the fifth volume loaded up on my Kindle to read right after this. Very very excited. So yeah I read Saga volume 2. Saga is about these two characters Marco and Alana and they are from two separate planets and their planets are currently at war and basically they meet um, and they fall in love and they have a baby and so now their two respective planets are out to hunt them down and kill their baby because their relationship and their baby kind of symbolizes everything that the two countries are the two planets are fighting against and they do not believe that there should be any kind of intermingling between their two species and so this is like a space opera where they are on the run and they're trying to raise their family um and like all of the people that they meet along the way who are helping them stay out of the clutches of tyranny so to speak um and this is just really incredible like the art style is absolutely beautiful and it is a full color comic which i don't have a lot of experience with but i love it so much like it's just so so pretty i don't really want to like spoil but like it's just gorgeous the art style is absolutely incredible and i love the characters so much it's really really funny um and it's just great like, it's really great i'm really attached to the characters and i can't wait to read subsequent volumes um i am waiting for them from the library but i may cave and just buy some i don't know but it's really really good very happy that i read it um so yeah all right now we can move into some of the actual books that i read so i read masters of death by olivia blake and this book was incredible this is a standalone fantasy novel um and it's kind of like a satirical urban fantasy type story and it's essentially about this character named fox demora and he is the godson of death and so basically death is his godfather and he calls him papa and they have this really cute really sweet little relationship going on and uh basically fox uses death to pretend like he's a medium and so he's a con artist and you know he's got this whole con artist thing going on and there's this vampire named viola and she is a realtor and she's trying to sell this house but there is a ghost living at the house named tom and tom refuses to move on because he has unfinished business and so she calls fox to help her hopefully communicate with this ghost so that she can get him to move on and she can sell the house um unfortunately things are not as simple as that and they all get entangled in this this kind of web of political intrigues between gods essentially and so this story is about death and who gets to master death and it is so 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 cool um i just love it i love the way that the paranormal aspects are done there's lots of different paranormal creatures in this um there's gods there's goddesses it's a real mix of all different types of like mythologies and um the one character the vampire she's really interesting because she's not like a typical european vampire she's like she was bitten in the philippines so the way her vampirism presents is different than like typical dracula-esque i want to suck your blood i mean she does drink blood but like it's different and it's just so interesting and i just loved it i love so many things about it um it made me cry desperately i have a whole vlog where you can see me crying um but it was just so great like i loved it um 
and I think that it was just so complex. I love Olivia Blake's writing style. Her writing style is very convoluted, very lots of the characters speak in riddles and you know it's just great i love it i love pretentiousness i love the characters i think they're so funny and i just had a great time and also there's a romance in this that literally brought me to my knees i was crying like crazy over multiple of the lines that they say to each other in this and it's just like incredible incredible stuff i love them so much i would highly highly recommend checking it out um it was just so good especially if you're someone who liked the alice six and you enjoy the way that olivia does her ensemble cast and like her writing style and stuff i think you'll enjoy this then i read you made a fool of death with your beauty by akweke emezi and this is a story about feiyi feiyi is a widow and she has been grieving the death of her husband for a really long time and at the start of this she is in the midst of trying to get back out there and um move past her grief and allow herself you know some happiness and some companionship again and she is basically having her hot girl summer the first chapter of this is Faye getting dug out in a bathroom like good for her good for her if that's what she wants to do with herself like I appreciate her I appreciate how raw and unfiltered and unapologetic this story is and how Faye is like just doing her no matter the circumstances she is willing to do whatever it takes for her to find her happiness she's very honest and open kind of character she's really flawed and messy and I absolutely love her so much so this is about her romantic entanglements with this guy named Nasir she goes on a trip with him and she ends up falling for his dad and it is just so wild and messy and I really enjoyed it it's also really beautiful and I think that it really just captures kind of how complex human relationships are um the only reason i'm going to give this four stars instead of maybe five stars is because the like the end game relationship in this while they have so many really beautiful quotes together i can't say that i really was like rooting for their relationship not that i was rooting against their relationship but i just didn't feel like super connected to them and i didn't feel like oh my god i love this couple so much like i just was kind of you know like oh i'm reading the story this story is great but i never got into that like oh my god i love this couple so much so yeah there's that for me so it was good um but i can't say that like i was super duper deeply obsessed with the romance but like it was cute i liked it so four stars then I read The Seventh Bride by T. Kingfisher. I am trying to work my way through T. Kingfisher's backlist um, because I read her Saint of Steel series and I really, really enjoyed it. Like, it was very great. Um, so I want to read more of her stuff and I started with this. This is a YA horror novel and it is about this character named Rhea and basically Rhea is kind of a peasant girl. Okay. Um, and Rhea is a peasant girl and she ends up being courted by this, I want to say he's a duke. That might not be true. He might just be like a lord. But she ends up getting courted by this lord. He wants to marry her. She doesn't want to marry him, but she knows that if she doesn't marry him, it will have negative impacts for her family. And come to find out, she is going to be his seventh bride. And so it is a very kind of creepy, ominous, gothic narrative. It really reminds me of the tale of Bluebeard. Um, and so I would say it's probably a retelling of that, but I don't know if that's like what the author is saying about it or not but like it's definitely a bluebeard retelling um t in my opinion and it's very creepy very ominous but it's not like too creepy it's not too horrifying but it is a bit fucked up and i enjoyed it like it was a fun time but i can't say that i was super invested in it it didn't super spook me out i wanted it to go a little bit further because there were so many really like wild and creepy messed up elements and i just wanted it to go like just a little step further into the creepy territory so i felt a little bit dissatisfied at the end of reading it but like it was still pretty cool so i'd give it like three stars three point five stars something like that um but i think that because of it i am going to read t king fisher's the hollow places um because that is like an adele horror so i'm hoping that that gives me all of the spooky spooky vibes that i'm looking for um so yeah that one was cool and then i read halloween haunt and the arcade by harley Leroux, and these are two books or not really books they're short stories um in this series called the dirty first date series which is exactly what it sounds like it's about people who go on first dates and they do the freak nasty mostly in public so indecent that it is a wonder how they didn't get caught and how they don't get arrested um but lots of fun definitely i in particular enjoyed the arcade a lot more than the halloween haunt just because the halloween haunt it had like a daddy king in it and like 
can't say that I'm 100% opposed to Daddy King. But I also can't say that it's my favorite thing ever. In particular because the characters had like just graduated high school. And I don't know like some skinny little emo twink just doesn't give me daddy vibes. You know what I'm saying? Like you no. Know, so it, it just it wasn't believable and I... I just couldn't get into the fantasy personally so it was just like it was kind of laughable when they were getting into the whole daddy king thing so I enjoyed the first book in that series which is called the museum it actually might not be but I enjoyed the other book in that series the museum which is about two people in college and I enjoyed the arcade which is also about two people in college and they were both hot um the Halloween haunt was a little bit it gave me a chuckle I, I can't say that it was like you know it was really steamy who had to fan myself it was just more of a ha ha he he kind of reading experience so yeah I didn't give any of them a star rating um because it's just like 30 pages of porn but like they were cool and the last thing that I read this month was not the life it seems by Tom Bryant and this is a memoir about or not a memoir this is a biography about the band My Chemical Romance if you don't know this about me, I am 110% obsessed with My Chemical Romance um, and I have been obsessively spamming my best friend Mariam with messages and screenshots and songs by them for the past like month or so because they are currently on their reunion tour and I am so excited to go to my concert in August like I cannot wait I I love my chemical romance so much and so yeah this biography it just chronicles their career and all that stuff um and it was pretty cool I would give it like a four star a more objective critique that I might have of it is that I really feel like the author took too much of a step back from the the work like um the whole book is really a collection of interviews that the author that the author had done with the band over the course of like several years during their career and so a lot of it is direct quotes from the band which I think is really really great and awesome but when I read a non-fiction or a memoir or something I do want there to still feel like there is some presence of the author in the text like I want to I want to be guided through the narrative and through the experience by the author you know what I'm saying but I feel like the author was so absent and it was just a collection of quotes so reading the quotes was fun and all but I want to know like what does the author think about him how would the author contextualize these events what additional information can the author give me and I feel like the author didn't really do that so for me it just felt like there was a little bit something missing it could have been a little bit more a little bit better but again that might just be because I am an intense fangirl and I just wanted to know more but it is what it is so I gave that one like four stars it was it was good but I just had nitpicks again because I'm an intense fangirl but that's just it is what it is so yeah that's all the books that I read in June and I would love to know if you've read any of these books or if you have any recommendations for me based off of the books that I read in here I want to know what you guys are reading what you guys would recommend thank you so much for watching hopefully I'll see you all in my next one and if you enjoyed this video do be sure to like and subscribe and all that good shit thank you so much to my wonderful wonderful patrons and I'll see you all in my next one bye